Thank you so much for having us. It's a pleasure to be here. I think we'll take a few moments to introduce ourselves and then we will get started. Um, Hill, would you like to go? I, I, I will take it away. Yeah, so um, my name is Hill Taylor and I am the uh, Dean of Faculty at American College of Healthcare Sciences. Um, my uh, background is uh, I've spent most of my academic career in schools of education or English departments uh, and have been an administrator in the form of uh, uh, director of Office of Learning Support as well as um, you know, now dean of faculty at, at ACHS. Uh, prior to being at ACHS, uh, I was at um, Oregon Health and Science University and before that, uh, University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today, and thank you for having us at Northwest eLearn. My name is Ashley Amig, and I am the Director of Library Services and Instruction at the American College of Healthcare Sciences. And our presentation today is actually, I don't think we actually introduced what our presentation is about, but our presentation is about an all-in-one curriculum mapping software called CourseTune. And what we have done with it here at ACHS, how we've adopted it, how we've implemented it within our curriculum, how we've aligned items, and we're just going to really talk a lot about a course student and what we've done here at ACHS with that, uh, with that software. Uh, so my role with Course Tune is really I'm more of the admin side. So I've done a lot of the reporting, the report polling. I've done the organization, and I've assisted uh, Amanda. So I'll let Amanda introduce herself as well and tell her a little bit about what she's um, done with Course Tune as well. Hi everyone, my name is Amanda Latin, and I am a professor at ACHS. I am also the aromatherapy and spa management program chair. Um, my background is in chemistry and education, and then also um, holistic health sciences, such as aromatherapy and herbal medicine. So I've been um, teaching at all levels of education for close to 20 years now, everything from high school up to postdoctoral continuing education. So uh, we are really excited to share this with you. This is a project that Ashley and I started working on about two years ago in collaboration uh, with us and our academic leadership team at ACHS, which we call our CETA team. The acronym stands for Center of Excellence in Teaching Technology and Assessment. And this was really a project uh, to further develop our outcomes and assessment practices at ACHS. And it was really born out of a need or necessity um, when I took over the program chair position about three or four years ago, um, both of the professional organizations that my programs report to in terms of education standards for our graduates to gain professional membership, both of those organizations completely changed their education standards. And so that uh, began a big um, project in my department to make sure that all of our programs from undergraduate certificates all the way up to our Masters of Science and Aromatherapy degree program aligned with these new education standards, which of course required outcomes and assessment best practices. And so my program was really a sandbox for this project, but it has expanded now to go across all of our departments and programs and is encompassed the other program chairs that we have, as well as the other members of our CETA team, including instructional designers, Hill, our CIO, uh, and, and our leadership team. So we're happy to share with you what we've discovered and explored over the last two years. We know that we're in unique roles here. Obviously, we are not professional. Um, outcomes and assessment people at our college. In fact, we don't have that department or role specifically. So we, all, we also needed to explore how to develop, uh, you know, practices that our team could fulfill and maintain successfully together. Good. All right. Uh, so I, b I believe I've got uh, the first couple of slides. Um, so, it's inter interesting from my uh, you know, perspective. I just, you know, when I introduced my, my background, I've been at ACHS since uh, December of 2019 and uh, you know, sort of came into this you know, project mis midstream, becoming familiar with the curriculum as well as the uh, you know, tools or the heuristics that ACHS had been using to develop and update 
um, and sort of interpret what, what their curriculum is doing. And you know, uh, ACHS has always been very conscientious of that. You know, uh, one, because uh, you know, since its inception, it's been um, uh, a distance learning. Uh, it started off as a correspondence school in New Zealand uh, you know, you know, decades ago, 40 years ago. And um, it's always had that you know, commitment to delivering curriculum, but then also thinking about you know, how that curriculum satisfies interests and needs uh, and you know, curricular objectives of the students uh, and how faculty, faculty and uh, courses epitomize that. So the learning objectives uh, do have um, real meaning at ACHS. And not to say that they don't have meaning in other places, but uh, it, it really is a driving principle uh, for what ACHS does when it you know, delivers curriculum, but also recasts and assesses it. So um, you know, with regard to the learning objective slide, I understand the connection between curriculum mapping and student success outcomes, specifically as it pertains to student success retention process. You know, so thinking about you know, the student's experience with ACHS, uh, and, and the curriculum, uh, recruitment, retention, matriculation, and graduation uh, all are really important nodes during the process. And uh, Amanda mentioned CETA, uh, you know, our, our, as well as our program chairs um, group, where we look at different interventions and processes where we can support student retention. Um, the learning objectives explain to others the benefits of mapping curriculum uh, and also identify new ways to examine how programs align with industry standards and reflect meaningfully on how our institution conducts course program review. All of this will come out uh, in the presentation. If it, it doesn't, uh, certainly feel free to ask for clarification um, during the you know, Q&A section. You know, so thinking about how this looks sort of you know, programmatically, but also in a sort of you know, granular way um, as the course tune um, is being you know, developed. So I guess next slide. Um, and I mentioned this briefly, um, you know, ACHS, uh, it's an accredited online holistic health sciences college. Uh, it was founded in 1978 in New Zealand uh, by Doreen Peterson, who's uh, still uh, very active with the college today. She, she's cur uh, currently you know, the president. Um, her, her vision has really shepherded the development of uh, this curriculum, as well as you know, the you know, students and the community that exists um, within the college, and, uh, uh, as well as the alumni. Uh, and the different you know, community partners that we engage with. So it's a really uh, unique space. Um, you know, I, I've been, again, you know, at ACHS less than a year, uh, and it's, I haven't seen an institution like this um, you know, ever in my you know, you know, three decades of uh, you know, teaching and uh, administrating. And I say that in a good way, not like, oh, well, I've never seen anything like this. No, it's, it, it is good. Uh, and so you know, take a, a, an opportunity, if you will, uh, if you haven't already, to look at the you know, curriculum and to maybe ask questions of, of Amanda uh, if you have you know, curriculum specific questions um, about how ACHS um, is influenced and influences the broader curricular space. Uh, we offer undergraduate and graduate certificates, diplomas and degrees in uh, holistic health education. Uh, we, we probably should add to that um, you know, micro credentials that are coming online as well that relate to uh, holistic and integrative health. All right, um, and Ashley, are you picking this one up or is this? Um, I can, yep, I can go ahead and pick it okay, up. Okay, sure. So, uh, Course Dune, what we're talking about today, is a visual instructional design tool that really helps with our curriculum mapping and has, uh, presents us with blueprints for designs and revisions of our courses and programs here at ACHS. So this is really a great tool for us because we needed something that was an all-in-one platform where we could really just gather all of our data and have it in one place where we can see all different types of our curriculum alignment and what it produced for us. So really it also of course assists in designing and managing our curriculum but this type of software also helps us prepare for our accreditation. So for example when we're going through our accreditation review looking at reports such as institutional level mapping and assessments reports, this really will help with our accreditation and present that kind of documents and um, evidence that is needed for our accreditation. 
So here at ACHS, we have seven different types of learning outcomes. And starting with the very top tier learning outcome, the institutional learning outcome, which is we call the ILOs, this is a type of learning outcome that represents the intended accomplishments of the college and it really closely relates to the program learning outcomes and also our course learning outcomes. So housed beneath that, we have our undergraduate and graduate institutional learning outcomes. And these learning outcomes should relate to our institutional learning outcomes, and they represent the intended accomplishments of the undergraduate and graduate programs here at ACHS. Beneath that, we have our program learning outcomes, and these learning outcomes represent the intended accomplishments of the program. And they should also closely relate to the institutional learning outcomes and the undergraduate learning outcomes. Beneath that, we have our course learning outcomes, and these learning outcomes, they represent the intended accomplishments of the course, and they should then relate or align with the program learning outcomes. And these learning outcomes are also very visible to our students. They're all listed on our website, in our course syllabi, and within our courses. And just a note, all of our courses are actually housed in the Canvas Learning Management System because we're an online, um, an online school as well. So beneath that, we also have our module learning outcomes. So these module learning outcomes are sometimes also referred to in this presentation as our course learning objectives. So these are a very granular kind of learning, um, learning objective or learning outcome that is housed within each module within our courses. And what they do is they then represent the attended, um, intended accomplishments of what the students will learn within each module within each course. And these should also closely relate to our course learning outcomes and program learning outcomes all the way up to our institutional learning outcomes. We also have, uh, we work with the degree qualification profiles, also know, known as the DQPs. And these are really a learning centered framework for what our college graduates should do and know after they graduate here at ACHS. And then we also, as Amanda briefly touched on with at least her, her program, which is an aromatherapy program, we have industry standards here at ACHS, which are organizations that us, our college has uh, strong ties to and that we align some of our programs with. So for example, aromatherapy, we align with AIA, NAHA and ARC, and we also have a few others, such as some herbal industry standards, some herb industry standards, and these are listed here as AHG and NANP for nutrition. So uh, before Course Tune, we were tracking all of this information uh, through several different documents and platforms. We had our credit hour worksheets, which actually is going to give you uh, a more in-depth discussion on each. We'll go through each of these, but we were basic, this basically our way of measuring um, the credit hour breakdown for every course at the college, and, and we'll show you that, um, that worksheet that we developed. We have our course matrices. We had our looping documents and curriculum maps, which were our previous alignment documents. And then we were also, Ashley and I were also conducting uh, faculty professional development work workshops around rubric calibration, which also related to our um, outcomes alignment and assessment component. And we were also uh, working with our rubrics, which we embed our learning outcomes into our grading rubric. So these were all the areas before course tune where we were basically uh, tracking outcomes and assessment within our curriculum and our programs. So as Amanda had mentioned, um, one of the documents that we're tracking our curriculum in is the credit hour worksheet. And this is a very large document that calculates the credit total hours per course. And we created this document with the collaboration of our CETA team and specifically our CIO, who's really good with helping create formulas within Google Sheets. So what this worksheet does for us is it calculates our credit total hours per each course. So this course, as I, excuse me, this worksheet, as I mentioned, is very large where it's one large worksheet with multiple tabs and within each tab is a course. So as you can probably imagine, 
that's a lot of documents in one worksheet. So what this credit hour worksheet, how it's broken down is it's broken down by module. So we'll enter in what module, uh, the type of item. So what type of item is in that module, the notes. So if it's a required reading, how many uh, pages a student is required to read, a uh, kind of activity. So the activity could be a preparation, an engagement, um, or even a, um, I believe, oh yeah, preparation, engagement, and assessment, uh, the count type, and then the count. So for example, if the student was reading 15 pages per that module, you put in the fit, you put in the number 15, and then it produces a calculation. So this then overall reproduces or produces our total hours uh, credit per course, which is and should equal approximately 135 credit hours for a three credit course. Another document that we have created for our assessment and curriculum mapping are our matrices. And this is a detailed breakdown of our courses. So it's a really, it's a, it's a map of our course, a very specific map of our course. And like our credit hour worksheets, um, these are also divided into one course for each sheet. So as you can also imagine, this is a lot of different documents um, that is kind of spread all over the place, but in one really folder. So it's, it's just a lot of information on multiple different sheets. So just a little bit about our matrices and what they uh, include for our courses is it's definitely just a, a blueprint. So we have our course learning outcomes listed there. We have the module number, our module learning outcomes, which as I've noted also are our course learning objectives, the module content item, the required reading for the module, graded assessments and a detailed explanation of what those are. And then if there's any exams, we'll list the exams. And we use these matrices here at ACHS to actually produce our courses. So when we have a brand new course that is adopted, we will have the SME work with the program chair to actually reproduce or produce the information on these matrices. And then these matrices are then passed to our instructional design team to create it within, to create the content within our Canvas courses. So this is kind of really that blueprint of the course. Now, this document here that we're showing you, this was actually Ashley and I's attempt <laughs> to create an alignment map prior to our discovery of Horsetune, where we were, and we were, we made this practice one based on the certificate in aromatherapy, which is the most um, introductory level program, in, undergraduate program in aromatherapy in my department. And what we, because in our own um, self-evaluation report, we discuss how our curriculum, we can show alignment from all the way from the uh, institutional learning outcome level all the way down to the module learning objective level or the module learning outcome level. And, but we found that we didn't actually have that complete mapping finished for our our courses and our programs, we had some of that completed, but not all of it. And so we were trying to create a system where we could uh, do that and document it. And again, this was driven by the fact that I needed a way to try to evaluate curriculum across the programs in my department to see how they aligned with these updated education standards. So we organized our chart, uh, obviously it's organized by program. So this will include all the courses in that program. And we color coordinated it by institutional uh, learning outcomes. So on the far left, we wrote out our institutional learning outcomes and then we started nesting the outcomes at the subsequent levels underneath them with the idea that eventually we would get down to um, module learning outcomes and then assessments at the module level so that we would have the linking or that uh, alignment from the institutional level all the way down uh, to the modular level. And this project actually took Ashley and I a really long time to work on because um, we had to find out, figure out ways to identify course learning objectives with, uh, you know, in this spreadsheet without necessarily keeping them with the numbering that was in the courses. Same thing with module learning outcomes and the assessments, et cetera. And um, it also became a very large document quickly, similar to our other documents. We were able to start identifying gaps. I mean, we were able to start seeing patterns with this um, approach. It wasn't like it was a, a failure, but we also realized it would take a long time to maintain them, 
a lot of man hours and it was still very difficult to analyze. So um, we presented this to our leadership team to say, okay, well, here's what we were able to create with the tools that we had, but we don't feel like it's a solution because it's still uh, difficult to interpret and difficult to maintain um, to be able to utilize it because you really want to be able to use your data to drive uh, your your reviews and your program revisions, your curriculum revisions, et cetera. So we said, we really feel like we need a technology solution. We really feel like we need a different way to go about doing this. Um, and for our team, it is a small college. And like I said, we don't have a dedicated um, outcomes and assessment individual on staff. So we really were looking for a technology solution that was gonna enable our current academic leadership to be able to complete this kind of outcomes and assessment work and maintain it. And then of course, if we grew and we did adopt someone to manage that, that they would have a system uh, to work with when they came on to the college that we would have been able to then grow from implementing um, a better system. So um, that was our, uh, this, was, this was probably what the first year of work, Ashley, getting yeah. the, getting, creating the credit hour worksheet um, and then doing that for all the classes at the college. So we worked together as a team to complete that. We made sure all the course matrices were up to date and current with the current curriculum. And then we started working on these looping documents to be able to align um, from the top level all the way down to the module level. So that was about a year of work to figure out what we already knew and what we could do with our current tools and what we needed uh, to identify the needs there. So that's when we started searching for, oh, yes, we need to talk about this. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> we also did this <laughs> in that same year. Let's, let's talk about this first. Go ahead, Ashley. Uh, do you, oh, oh this is my slide. <laughs> I I, go ahead, Amanda. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's finals. It's finals. That's my excuse. Man. Um, so in between this, we also uh, did a full day faculty development workshop, uh, Ashley and I did, which was really lovely. It was a rubric calibration workshop where we led the faculty. We had... Um, three pieces, three student uh, examples of work for a discussion. We chose our undergraduate discussion uh, rubric simply because it's a rubric that's used across many courses and programs at our institution. It's one that pretty much every faculty that teaches at the college will use to grade at some point, uh, if not many points in their teaching work. And we had our group of faculty that were at the workshop, we all graded the three student examples using the rubric and then we discussed i apologize for the train i'm in an urban setting uh we discussed what were we were looking for for each of these uh sections of the rubric but more importantly for this discussion we were also looking at how to use the institutional learning outcome that's embedded into the rubric how do we actually use that in our assessment of student work what was the role of that because we include um, institutional learning outcomes and either undergraduate as this example is here undergraduate institutional learning outcomes or graduate institutional learning outcomes in some of our rubrics and canvas captures that data as our faculty evaluate um, students within the rubric. It captures that data and it tells us where our students are meeting these upper level um, institutional learning outcomes within their programs. However, the question arises because it's given a point value, the question arises for faculty, how do I use this in my assessment of student work? And so what we we really uh, identified is that we needed to make sure that we were embedding institutional uh, learning outcomes that truly aligned uh, within that assessment for where what the, what outcome was was being assessed and met uh, within that uh, assignment and so that led us back to being able to complete that looping document to really make that effective to really be able to give faculty um, firm ground to stand on for how they were utilizing that in their assessment and make sure that it was we were all on the same page with that. So we got a lot of great feedback from our faculty 
from this rubric calibration workshop. In fact, they asked for more of it, but we said, let us finish this alignment piece first, and then let's circle back to really work on these rubrics. And that's the point where the rubber uh, hits the road with the students, right? Because this is what they're, they're gonna see uh, there, where it connects with them to see, for them to see how they're meeting these outcomes, these goals they're working towards um, in their education. Mm -hmm. Um, and here is just a further, more detailed example of what that rubric will look like. It does look like within our courses. Uh, so here is what uh, one of our assignment rubrics with a learning outcome attached. And how the learning outcome is assessed is, is actually graded within the rubric itself. So when a instructor grades the rubric, they'll also grade the learning outcome. And then that learning outcome will be embedded or it'll actually be graded in our learning mastery gradebook within Canvas. And from there, we can then pull data from um, the learning mastery gradebook and look at that data in further detail. So uh, benefits of just mapping the curriculum in general, really mapping the curriculum identifies gaps in the curriculum. So this is really beneficial for alignment, uh, it helps eliminate a necessary assessment of curriculum or content in our curriculum. And mapping the curriculum really helps us focus our learning outcomes and curriculum just specifically on what we need in that course. And it helps our instructors focus on exactly what they need to teach and what they need to, you know, understand and learn and teach our students. So here's what we have. Um, this is our curriculum map, or it used to be our curriculum map before we adopted Course Tune. Uh, here is a, um, the certificate of aromatherapy curriculum map. And it's, as you can see, we marked out the required courses without a line with each program learning outcome with an X. So we haven't, we, when we did these curriculum maps, they weren't as detailed as they should be. So for example, we didn't, we didn't um, mark them as where a program le learning outcome is introduced, <clears throat> reinforced, or mastered. And so that was just one of the issues we had with this type of curriculum map is we, didn't, we couldn't get into that granular level of detail that we really needed, which is another reason why we kind of got into course tune is that they can provide us with those type of reports and which is something you will see actually later on in this presentation. We'll show you our brand new uh, curriculum map. So with all of that being said, these are the challenges that we identified in this first half of our project that we just had too many documents uh, that all of the documents had to be updated manually and they were not synchronized with one another. So it was very difficult to streamline either the update process or the analytics of it. So we were looking at, you know, five or six different documents and it was difficult to get a clear data picture from them and which made it difficult to take action. It made it made it difficult for us to decide what needed to be done in the curriculum, what needed to be done in the assessments or the rubrics, what needed to be done in faculty training, et cetera. And of course, all of those things impact student success. All of those things are going to impact course completion rates, student satisfaction rates, and, and lead up, you know, of course, it has a ripple effect towards them completing their programs, um, et cetera. And like I said, we also have a small team and all of this takes time. So there were projects that were not able to come to fruition simply because we didn't have the man hours uh, to complete um, the process within all of this documentation. Um, and so it became really evident, like I said before, that we needed a technology um, solution for that. So we began looking, uh, we began looking for a technology solution and um, that's when we identified course tune. So our, CI, our COO, Tracy Abel, saw a course tune presentation demonstration at another education conference, and she brought it back to our team after we had shown her that giant alignment spreadsheet that Ashley and I have been working on. She says, you know what, I think I may have found something that could work. And, um, and, and so we got a course tune demonstration. Of course, we looked at a few other options as well. It's always good to compare things. Your your institution may not have the same needs as ours, but for us, Course Tune really was um, the solution we were looking for and, and something that we really 
uh, appreciated was that they said, we'll take your messy. You don't have to have your data in a perfect format in order to move it over to this new system and start working with it. And that was really what we needed. We needed to be able to capture the data in what we currently had and then start moving it over to a different platform to start being able to work with it better. And, and that's exactly what we started doing um, at the beginning of the year, 20, uh, January 2020, with Course Tune. So these are the uh, steps that we have taken so far this year with Course Tune. The first phase was the data transfer, and we decided to move our entire institution's worth of data of all the documents that we just showed you over to Cortune. We really took the plunge and decided to do that. And that process took us about two months completely for their team to work with our team and, and to make that transfer process. Um, we were meeting with them uh, weekly, Ashley, myself, our CIO, uh, and Hill, the four of us were meeting with uh, our course tune support weekly during that process. And we were still using the certificate of aromatherapy as our sandbox to play with because we needed to develop our own best practices um, around this. And so the, the data got moved over, the courses, course folders began to get set up. We, and then we set up our program folders and really started organizing it. And that's when Ashley and I started doing uh, more training in this and uh, figuring out the process of alignment and it with all of the different levels of outcomes in course tune uh, we created our implementation schedule and uh, we began uh, for the courses who was going to work in each course which of course like i said this is a, a huge project because we're doing our entire curriculum so we had uh, training with the other program chairs and they started working in the courses and so we were having weekly meetings at that point with our different program chairs, as well as continuing to have uh, monthly meetings with Course Tune. And um, as the, we're gonna walk you through step by step. So we are basically in step five right now, where we are about halfway through the alignment process in our, in our classes, I think it's gonna take uh, we're, so, we're still going to be working on that probably over the next six months or so uh, to finish that. And, um, and then we'll be looking at our next steps. But we have finished many courses and a number of programs already uh, within this process. And we're still meeting with course students. You know, there's still more for us to learn. And it, what's great is they've continued to grow even since the beginning of the year and uh, are continually getting feedback mm -hmm. from their clients. So uh, the alignment process actually is divided into two different levels here at ACHS and it works, you know, it worked really best with Course Tune as well. So we have two different uh, levels, which is the course level, which is also known as the root level and the program level. So here are the few steps that we did uh, when aligning our courses in Course Tune. So as step one, we first started off with aligning our ACHS learning objectives, also known as our module learning outcomes to our cor course learning outcomes. And then the second step is we'll be aligning or we have aligned our ACHS course learning outcomes to our ACHS undergraduate and graduate institutional learning outcomes. Following that, we will align our ACHS course learning outcomes to our ACHS institutional learning outcomes. So as you can see, we've kind of moved on up. And then lastly, if there are any industry standards, we will, or excuse me, we uh, for step four align our ACHS learning objectives to our ACHS course assessments. And this is really interesting because this is where we actually have trained and are training our program chairs and faculty to uh, do within course tune as well. So, you know, it's a very, um, involved process that it takes a lot of work. However, um, we're very proud of it. So. Yeah, I think what, it's important to note, just to clarify what Ashley's talking about here, um, the course in the course tune platform, each course exists at a, at a root level. So that's just a course independent of any program that it is a part of. And that's the alignment process she's talking about there. What's awesome about course tune is when you do that alignment at the root level, it then pushes that data out to that course as it appears in every program folder that that course is a part of. So you don't have to do any realignment at those levels because that alignment would remain the same regardless of which program the course is a part of. 
So the, the course has its own root level um, folder, and then it also can exist in multiple program level folders, which is what Ashley's going to talk to you about now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so our second process is the program level alignment. So after we've gone through our course level alignment, then we'll move on to the individual programs. And with that alignment, there's only two steps involved. So what we do is we then align each course learning outcome within the program to the ACHS program level outcomes. So here's where we get really granular with the introduced, reinforced, and mastery level. And with mm -hmm. this type of alignment, this is what then creates that great uh, curriculum map. And I'll also have an example of what that looks like in just a few slides. So the second step, if there are industry standards, is then we'll align the program level outcomes with the industry standards. So with Amanda Latin's program, she's uh, the aromatherapy chair, she, uh, with the certificate in aromatherapy programs, they align with the AIA and NAHA level standards. So they're, um, that, that's just one of the programs here that has industry standards that we align with. So now I'm going to actually do a just a quick brief walkthrough of what course student looks like on our end and uh, how that alignment looks for us. So this is course tune and it is, oh my goodness. So when we first looked at it, it was very overwhelming, but amazing. You know, there's so, it's, it's, it's really cool what, what it can do with the alignment and how everything is just all in one place. Um, so here we are looking at our certificate in aromatherapy program and what that looks like within course tune. So I'm going to kind of show you just some alignment at the program level, and then I'm going to click into an individual course and show you what that looks like at a course level. So if you go into the right hand, uh, the corner of the screen, there are our institutional level and all of our program level learning outcomes and our industry level outcomes are listed. And this is where if you click on each individual one, it'll highlight where that is aligned within the program. So this was really awesome for us to see. Okay, so this is where our institutional learning outcomes are aligned and you can see it all in one place. And all of this alignment, of course, we had to do on our own, but rather than having to flip through multiple sheets and see, okay, which, where does this institutional learning outcome align with the, which course and whatnot, once you just highlight it, it'll highlight it within directly in one place. Um, same goes with our undergraduate institutional learning outcomes. You can just select which ones and you can see where they highlight and the industry standards and so on. If you get down to the course level, so if I click on say Aroma 101, this then shows even even deeper level. So for example, here we can see, um, I guess I'll, I'll go into the program levels. You can see where the program levels are introduced, if there's reinforcement at all in this course, mastery. So this is really where you can see that granularity that we really like to see um, for our alignment and our assessment. And then also within course tune, we can pull some really specific reports and show um, our program, uh, we can actually pull some reports and include them in our program reviews and course reviews as well. So, I mean, I don't know if there's, any, Amanda, is there anything else you want me to kind of go through with this one or have anything um, to add on? Yeah, so if we went back to the program view, um, there's also opportunity to use this as a faculty um, training or development uh, tool. So for my faculty that are teaching uh, within this program, for example, I had to create updated case study curriculum over the last several years and uh, all of my faculty needed to go undergo training on teaching and assessing that curriculum. I would be able to open up either the mapping for the aromatherapy professional organizations or the mapping for our program learning outcomes and speak to where those outcomes are being met within the courses that our faculty are teaching. And it's a very visual presentation. It's very usable and um, easy to digest. So these, this alone over here where you see AIA level two and NAHA level two, those alone were other big spreadsheets that I was having to create and figure out where my curriculum was meeting. Um, education standards with each of those. So to just be able to open that and then uh, click on different standards within that and see which courses were needing those and be able to talk to how I built in 
outcomes into the uh, case study uh, grading rubric for my, my faculty, I wish I would have already had this in place when I was training them on that because I think that would have made such a huge impact for them uh, where we were all be on, together as a teaching team understanding what it was that we were working to accomplish within these programs and, and courses together. So uh, not only does this work so well uh, for, as a curriculum tool, as an outcomes tool, it also is a fantastic um, to, tool to support and train faculty and to really look at your assessment process. I, I just can't tell you, it's very versatile without even getting into the reporting. To just look at this live instance and to be able to have that is very versatile, mm -hmm. um, much more impactful than spreadsheets, much more impactful than spreadsheets. So I, I think we're just, just starting to figure out all the ways that we can um, now use this in, in our processes. Yes, mm -hmm. no, great point. So let's see. So next, um, we're going to walk you through some of the reports that Course Student can reproduce for us. So in Course Student, there are, like I said, two different levels. We have course level reports and program level reports. So with the course level reports, we can pull a course summary report, a plan for module report, and a course outcome report. And then for our program level reports, we can pull the program mapping report and a program activity report. And these reports, I'm gonna show you in the next few slides, but we've used or will be using these reports for our program reviews and for our course reviews. So course student also can produce several other reports besides the ones that I've listed here, but these are just the reports that we have chosen that we found most beneficial for our program reviews and our course reviews. So the course summary report is a report that's at the course level. And what this report does is it shows us the alignment of our course learning objectives to each course learning outcome within the course. This is just a, a really simple snapshot of what that report looks like from Course Tune. This is just a PDF snap, uh, snapshot. And this is not all of the, the learning objectives alignment. So of course, this is a very, uh, a much longer report, but this is very useful for us to see, okay, exactly which learning objective does then align with that course learning outcome or which ones do not align with that course learning outcome within uh, each course. So our plan for module report, this is a really great report to show us which activities and assessments align with, or excuse me, which learning objectives align with each course assessment or each assessment within our courses. So here is just once again, a really quick snapshot of uh, the report itself. And this goes into really a granular detail of which course learning uh, objectives align with each assessment or which ones do not. So then we can kind of reevaluate, you know, are these learning objectives really needed for this assessment or for this course itself? So the course outcome report is another type of report that we, we have started to pull. And this then shows us the course um, learning, excuse me, the course learning objectives and learning outcomes alignment with our institutional level outcomes and our undergraduate institutional level outcomes. So it's really then that next step up of showing what that aligns to within each course. And then our program mapping report. And this is the report that is so great because this report is then replacing our curriculum map, that curriculum map that I briefly talked about um, at the beginning of our presentation, where it shows what program learning outcome aligns or where each program learning outcome is introduced, reinforced, or now mastered within the course, within the program. So this really gives us that granular level of detail that we really wanted to see with our curriculum maps. And this report is something that we use and will continue to use for our program reviews because we want to see that granular level of detail. And then we also have our program activities report that we'll be pulling from Course Tune. And this report is something that will replace our credit hour worksheets. So this does a very similar thing to what 
our credit hour worksheet calculations do is we will, once everything is entered into course tune, including all of our assessments, including all the readings, it will then calculate a total time allotted per for each course. So it'll do it'll do what our worksheets have been doing. However, instead of flipping through multiple different tabs, it will be all in one place for us. And we'll also be using these type of program activity reports for our program and course reviews. So this is where we've come so far uh, with this work. As I said, we are still working to finish the alignment process for all of our courses and all of our programs. Um, we've already identified a number of opportunities for growth and more training within this process, you know, really looking at our own concept of alignment, what are our best practices for when we feel that, you know, a course learning objective aligns uh, up to the program level or up to the institutional level or looking at where where does an assessment align, like really opportunities for our program chairs and, you know, Ashley and our other instructional designer to really, um, as a team, have a really clear picture of that because we've all been drawing on our own background and our own previous education and experience with that. And so we've, we've identified some opportunities for more training there. Um, and with these reports that we can now generate, you know, it really opens the door to be able to do so much more with this data that we just weren't able to do before. So I think it's really going to uh, provide opportunity for growth all the way around in how we are assessing our curriculum and what we're able to accomplish with our program review process. Um, I think it's going to be much more impactful. We've already identified some things, even though we're only halfway through the alignment process, um, you know, opportunities where we see a class just has way too much content in it and we're going to be able to really pare that down, which is going to really support students. And we'll know, we'll be able to do that very intentionally. We'll be able to say we definitely don't need all of this content around this particular outcome. We can remove it and still meet, you know, the needs of the students and meet that program level outcome. It, it's just made it so much clearer to be able to have a guide um, to in that process or there's some classes where it's under you know and we we like wow we don't actually we don't address this program learning outcome adequately and so we we know where we can add there um i think moving forward you know so the next step would be to be able to have canvas integration which course tune does integrate with canvas and that would you know we're not there yet it would take you know faculty training obviously which we're not we're not ready for i don't think this would be until everything was done, but it would be possible for faculty to be able to see the live instance of the course too and of the class that they're teaching and see that alignment real time as they're looking at their syllabus, as they're you know, teaching in the modules or assessing. And they can leave comments as well, real time. Students too, um, which again, I think that that would have to be um, brought in in, in a, intentful way into the culture of the student body, you know, to be able to give that feedback, but that's what we want to hear. That's the, that really closes the loop, um, the feedback loop on where students were getting stuck or where they were really connecting and be able to integrate it right into this um, outcomes and assessment platform, you know, so they weren't two separate concepts. They were really connecting there and, and that's going to be the type of feedback that is going to take the program reviews really even further than that. You know, we're not canvassing for that information from surveys, et cetera, et cetera. It can be put implemented right into uh, course two. And so there's a lot of cool opportunities for continued growth um, here, but this is what we have accomplished in the last two years and we wanted to share it with you. Um, does anyone have any questions for us? I hope that was useful for everyone. There's a few things that came up in the chat. Yes, David had a question. So David had asked, there have been studies showing pros versus cons of showing modules that can be large yet complete versus modules of each week. So I, I'm not sure if there's been studies. I can say that at ACHS we have two-week modules. We have modules that go over more than one week. We don't necessarily start a new module each week. 
um, I think that that, in my, in my professional opinion, I think that really relates to the culture of your school and how you've organized your curriculum. Uh, we wanted our curriculum to be uniform. So in terms of how students were progressing through modules in the term, we didn't want them to be in module three in one class and module five in another class uh, within the same uh, term. So we created a uniform structure uh, in the courses. And we do have centralized curriculum. So we, we really have an awesome opportunity to do those types of things, but it helps. We felt it really supported students for it to be clear as they progress through their term to be in modules, the same module number um, in, in, in each class. And we also have uh, due dates set up the same. So the due dates are the same across our courses for the same reason. We just really felt that it, it helped our students stay focused and uh, reduce confusion. So we had another question. This is Velda. We had another question if faculty are paid for their work on this. So um, this is, Ashley and I do this as a part of our jobs, um, myself as the program chair and Ashley in her role as, um, I can't remember your official title right now off the top of my it's head. A librarian is, is absolutely fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, now for the faculty, uh, faculty do have a small number of hours of training that are built into their role at the college every term. And then what we do is we offer them CE, which um, they can use towards their CE requirements every year for some of these. And that's what I did. Like, for example, when I was doing um, the case study training in my department, all of my faculty were awarded um, CE credit uh, for that time. OK, we have another question. What kind of impact do you hope to see in the student outcomes, the assessment data, this next year as the aligned courses go live? So the courses are currently live. We are working with curriculum that is already in existence. Um, we have started using this platform to, as we're developing new courses so that uh, we're, you know, they're kind of the reverse process where we're able to see that alignment map as we're developing the curriculum. So all the curriculum that we're currently aligning is live. What we would like to see then is as we are using these reports in our program reviews, in our course reviews, that like I said, we're going to be able to reduce bloat. We're going to be able to make sure that our rubrics and our assessments are in alignment with the correct outcomes mm -hmm. and that our faculty have that connection and that understanding piece of the big picture as they're working on assessments. So we really hope, again, that that makes it more transparent for the student and helps them engage with the whys and the what of each aspect of their course and their program, which we feel will motivate them uh, to be successful and to also feel successful in that process. Another question, uh, do you find that some of these assessments are now being revisited for revision since COVID-19 or did their initial planning incorporate considerations for possible distance delivery? Um, I'm just going to keep answering these unless you guys want to interject. <laughs> All right, is this okay? Do you want me to keep going? I feel like you have a little more um, expertise since oh. you teach a lot of this curriculum. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> We are a fully online institution and, you know, when Hill was sharing about our origins, uh, we were founded, you know, for, uh, over 40 years ago and our school actually was doing distance education before the internet started. So our president, Doreen Peterson, is a naturopathic physician and she was commissioned to figure out how how to deliver continuing education to the naturopathic doctors in Australia and New Zealand who couldn't necessarily travel um, to the large cities, to the universities every year to finish that. And so all of our curriculum is currently de delivered online. And um, something that we were, we were excited to share that a little bit to see just how much can be accomplished with well-designed online curriculum. So um, currently we are not having to make any modifications due to COVID-19. However, I will say that um, we are very intentionally, very flexible with students in terms of, uh, you know, when they're able to turn things in and making accommodations as necessary. And, and we've been even more so uh, throughout this crisis with our students there. 
Okay, um, I have another question, but I'd like to encourage participants to uh, either enter their questions in the Q&A or in the chat. We only have a couple minutes left. So can you elaborate on how you use this to train faculty? At, like what types of faculty training are you doing using this platform? Um, so we have not transitioned yet to using this uh, for faculty training. I was just identifying some opportunities that I've already seen where we could be used for faculty training. I do think that one of the big areas that we are going to be doing that in uh, will be around this, uh, like the rubric calibration that we talked about, where we're looking at the rubric and discussing what is it, what is it assessing in a larger picture within a course, within a program, and at the institution. And, you know, that provides us, the CETA team, the academic leadership team, an opportunity to see where rubrics need to be revised mm -hmm. um, effectively, too. And just to kind of add on to that really quickly, sorry. So uh, mm -hmm. we also have done some training with at least just a, a, with our program chairs, you know, it's just more some individual training of how mm -hmm. the, the course tune works and how they can work with course mm -hmm. tune with the alignment mm -hmm. and um, mapping the alignment within the courses mm -hmm. in course tune and the programs in course tune. So we've done that kind of training, you know, one on one yes. training, yes. Um, but not the larger kind of um, a group work where we've really looked at the assessments and the alignment within course tune and done more mm -hmm. training on that. Yeah, predominantly our training's been with the, the program chairs at this, yes. at this mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. Okay, what level of access to the reports will faculty have? That's a great question. Um, so um, currently, they do not have full access like like me and Amanda currently have, um, and they probably will not. We haven't actually figured out exactly what type of access they will be getting. Currently, I, me and Amanda only have that type of access where we can pull those specific types of reports, um, but we have not yet discussed how we want to share that with our faculty and what kind of level of detail we want them to have access to those reports. Okay, that's fair. As faculty, I would want access. I would want to see those reports. So I think like that's going to be the next in the next steps. Definitely. You know, I feel like like I said, we've only this has only been six months since we've started implementing yeah. this, and we have not finished the alignment process. So there isn't reports there isn't necessarily data for every course. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. the feeling was let's in bring faculty in when we have a complete picture for them to to work with um, definitely and i think we also just didn't want to overwhelm at this this point our faculty with with course tune and since there's just a lot of information and a lot of moving parts in course tune we didn't want to overwhelm yeah so diane weaver from course tune here is you know there are you can give your faculty lots of access to this as viewers within course tune it's just we have not we're not at that point yet at our institution. Mm -hmm. So there is opportunity for faculty yeah. to be very involved and, and leave feedback. It's just we're, we haven't started doing that process yet. Okay, that makes sense. Um, I think that's about all of the questions. Weiwei? Yeah, I'm watching the clock here. We're almost at our, um, I think we've got all the questions covered as well. That's great. Um, thank you so much, Ashley, Amanda, and Hill for sharing your experience and also demonstrating a tool um, with us. And um, thanks everyone for joining us. And we are, we're going to close the webinar now, but if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out. And we also look forward to seeing you in some of other sessions in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Bye.